Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Annie, and I'm from the Meat Raffle Committee, and I'm here to talk about the chest freezer in the room. This freezer and $200 in gift cards was donated, was generously donated by the Kolechko family of the Petrzak Funeral Home. And if there's anything wrong with that pronunciation, it's on me. Okay? So it's just one of the prizes, the many prizes that you can win if you purchase a ticket into our virtual meet raffle. And even though it's virtual, you do not need to watch in order to win. Okay, so if you're not into all that, still purchase a ticket and you can still win. Tickets are now on sale, one for $50, two for 90. Each ticket that you purchase gets you entry into 12 rounds of gift cards as prizes, with a minimum of three winners per round. Some rounds might be four winners, some rounds might be five. But wait, there's more. You will also be entered into the bonus round, which will give you another three chances to win some more gift cards. But wait, there's still more. You also get a chance to be entered into our 50-50, which will be determined by how many tickets we sell. So for, again, for the one ticket that you purchase, you're entered into 12 rounds, the bonus round, the 50-50, and the chest freezer. And probably the balloons if you really want them. They're adorable, aren't they? All right. So we're asking for your help to make this success for our parish. Thank you if you have already purchased a ticket, and good luck on that. Flyers are at the front of the church, in the back of the church. There's also fact sheets there. If you really wanted to read it to understand a little bit more, there is a fact sheet available. Also on the back of that tells you what gift cards are for each round, and how many, and what value. So you can turn them in at the rectory. You can turn in the, the entry form in the church basket, or you can drop it off at the rectory. And you can also pay by credit card if you would like. So again, the drawing will be held on March 5th at 7 p.m. It will be streamed live on St. John the 23rd's Facebook page. And again, you do not need to watch in order to win. And thank you and good luck. Please stand.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We welcome you today as we celebrate the sixth Sunday of Ordinary Time, but it's also Valentine's Day weekend. You can see our lector and our, our cantor have red on. Um, people told me yesterday when we had our last weekday Mass that I should have the blood of the martyrs on, the red color of the, ch- the vestments. But we wish you all a very happy Valentine's Day weekend. And it teaches us as we hear the gospel today about how God loves us immensely when times are good and when times are not good. And God's love pervades and prevails over it all. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. God who teaches that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, If someone has on his skin a scab or pustule or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare and shall muffle his beard. 
he shall cry out, Unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean, since he is, in fact, unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or to the Church of God, just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him and said to him, I do will it be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, See that you tell no one anything, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hard to believe, but we're about a week after the Super Bowl. And if you would go back a Super Bowl earlier, so, you know, a a year ago, the talk of the town or the talk of the nation was about Patrick Mahomes, the the Kansas City Chiefs quarterback, just that rising star at that Super Bowl a year ago. He lost this year, but we're talking the previous year. But there in the background was the head coach, Andy Reid, just being so proud of his men on that field. And he was also so proud of his son, the linebacker's coach, which would be Britt Reed, his son. And they show the two of them kind of embracing a year ago on the field as they're celebrating a team victory. Um, and naturally, they would be ecstatic to win. But all the commentators talked about that father-son combination and, you know, the great commitment to coaching that brought them to the Super Bowl. That was not this year. It was last year. This year, Britt Reed wasn't even there. He wasn't at the Super Bowl. And this particular week, so we're talking days after the Super Bowl, the Chiefs released him as one of the coaches. And so I would say or propose to you that if you were going to meet a real-life leper right now, it would be Britt Reed in the nation. The Thursday before the Super Bowl, Britt Reed was involved in a multi-car accident in Kansas City that resulted in a couple of children going to the hospital. One car had run out of gas, and then another car stopped to help that vehicle. And Britt Reed got involved in a collision with the two of those cars that happened. The one, five, one of them, a five-year-old girl named Ariel, she's still in a coma today from that accident, and she had a brain injury from it. But there's also, there were issues of alcohol where he said it, you know, he had a couple of drinks, two to three drinks, which, they, which people would say, but that's what he said at the accident scene. And so last week at the Super Bowl, the first time I heard the commentators talk about Britt Reed, the coach, the linebacker's coach, and also the accident that occurred, was in the fourth quarter where they kind of whispered a notion and also some prayers for Ariel, that girl that was involved in it. You know, it's hard, hard enough to get to the Super Bowl. We, we know that from our, for our, from our own Buffalo Bills. And when you go to it, when you go all the way there, it's hard to be second best. We remember that too in, in years in which the Bills were number two. But why don't we add an accident on, too, to that head coach that, that occurred, you know? And it makes it really, really hard for that family. You know, none of us likes to fail. If we were to get on Facebook or Twitter or any of the social media, it's all about success, isn't it? I mean, how many friends you have, how many likes you got, and and how many people are listening to you. In fact, there's some news articles sometimes where there's commentators that, that people hire people to like their Facebook page or like their posts. But our world is designed to be happy, and you have to be happy all the time. But I think we all know that we're not happy all the time. And sometimes we get alienated, and we can have a pretty bad day. But actually, failure is part of life. It's just part of life. And so a couple of days before Ash Wednesday, which is this Wednesday, we hear about a leper who Jesus encounters and heals. 
You know, if we don't fail sometime, we can't improve. If we never see a dark day in our life, we never know when it's sunny out. We're all human beings and we have our weaknesses. And the beauty of God is that he becomes a human being to rescue us, enter into our struggles. The greatest struggle would be him carrying that cross and bearing that cross, but also moving us through death to salvation. That's what we see in these readings today. Defeat. You know, last week's gospel spoke of Matthew, um, I'm sorry, Mark's gospel, spoke of Jesus healing Simon's mother-in-law and that rapid growth of fame that, that was encountered by Jesus. The whole town was at the door, it said in the gospel last week. And they were just so totally changed and astonished by that teaching. All of Galilee. So this week's passage deals with Jesus going to the outskirts of society. He's not able to deal with people in this town anymore. He's just too much of a celebrity there. So he goes into the byways and farways of society. And his mission is basically to place himself out in the camp. So he's on the outskirts of the towns in order to bring people to Christ. And it tells the world that Jesus goes to where we're all alone or we feel alienated. It's not so much that we can certainly meet him in Times Square, but he's more likely to find us when we're not doing well and we're totally on our, on our own. You know, I felt so bad for that girl in the coma. I feel bad for that entire family. And I also feel bad for all the people that are involved in this, you know, this really horrific collision. When we speak of lepers, you know, at the time of the Bible's origination, the Old Testament, lepers were something that was a temporary experience initially. You know, Moses was a leper briefly in, in chapter 4 of Exodus. His sister Marion was a, a leper in the book of Numbers. God uses four lepers to deliver the people from Samaria in 2 Kings. We also always hear, go show yourself to the priest to be able to be welcomed back into the community. At the time of Jesus, though, it became so hard to be a leper. In reality, at that time, you would wear a bell around your neck. You'd have to shout out to the world, unclean, unclean, basically stay away from me. And often we come to church in order to find that community and that support when things are low. These lepers were told to stay away. And so it wasn't a time of change where it's going to be a temporary experience at the time of Jesus. Instead, it was your life's fate. And they became among what you would call the walking dead. Talk about being defeated, ostracized, alone. And yet I think all of us in our families, sometimes in our marriages, even when we're celebrating, St. Valentine's Day, there's times with our relationships with our friends, there's times at work where we can't even speak to our boss, where we feel so alone and so alienated. And we just feel like we're all alone against the world. It's me alone against the world. That scenario, that's what this leper was experiencing. And what Jesus is saying is, come to me. Come to me and come to me and I will heal you. We may not know any lepers in our, in our, in our existence, but I think we all could find someone that we know who is sad or who feels sick who feels lonely or feels excluded. There are times when we don't call, we, we're basically lepers ourselves because we all want to belong. When we meet this leper in the gospel today, he takes the initiative instead of staying away from Jesus, but to call out to him. He puts his neck basically on the line, comes to Christ for that healing, and it was his faith that saved him. He ends up saying to Jesus, if you will it, you can cure me. And Jesus accepts that challenge by saying, I do will it. Be made clean. I think we all know that disease is not really part of God's plan for us. Illness is not part of God's plan. Sins and mistakes that we make in life, it's not part of God's plan. And Jesus immediately felt sorry for that leper just like he feels sorry for us when we come to him and we go down on our knees and we say, Lord, help me. And the beauty of this gospel is that we know that we have a saving Lord 
who will is, in essence, our greatest valentine. He loves us beyond all mention and all, all notion. And his actions state today that he wants each one of us to be whole and to be holy. He wants us to be freed of our pains. He doesn't want us to feel alone and not feel cursed, not cursed by God himself. And so he goes to the outskirts of the community to bring people home. He's going to enter into the physical and emotional suffering that we experience and make us free. This Brit Reed feels totally alone right now. No matter what happens, especially as he's released from the team, I googled on the internet today, somebody maybe, any of them, any of the players of the NFL, that have publicly said that they've made contact with the man. And there isn't one entry on Google of which someone throughout the NFL will publicly state that they spoke to this man. Talk about feeling alone. Where last year he was one of the coaches of a Super Bowl winning team. That's what happens when we experience the defeat. But you know, God is there. God is there when we struggle and when we have failures and he wants us to come to him. I think all of us know lepers in our life. If we're going to be a little bit more like Christ, we need to reach out to them. Think about people in your own family that feel ostracized or in your workplaces or in your schools. People that feel that they're all alone and reach out and give them a helping hand. That's what Jesus does in this gospel. He wills that that person be made clean, that that person once again belongs. And I'll bet if we do that, it will not only change that person's life, but will also change our own life. Take a look at the saints that we experience all throughout the years. St. Francis of Assisi, where did he go? He went to the leper colonies. St. Peter Damien and St. Marion Cope from St. Mary and Copus from Syracuse. In Hawaii, they serve with the lepers. Our reading from the second, re the second reading today tells us that whatever we eat or drink or whatever we do, do everything for the glory of God. Think in your life this week, who's a leper out there who needs that encouraging word or that help and then help them. Do it for the glory of God. Think of ways in which you feel like you're a leper in your own skin, you know? Those particular experiences that you feel right now, that's what Jesus says, come and drink. Come and eat around this table. Use this Lent that is just beginning in a couple of days and allow yourself to be healed. That's what Britt Reed has to experience right now in order to get through a horrific car crash that he probably never, ever anticipated a couple of days before the Super Bowl. May we enter into God's saving grace as well and be saved by the loving power of a loving Lord that draws us back and use this particular Mass and Lent that begins in a couple of days to start a new beginning, a new beginning of healing in our lives. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I invite you to rise as we now renew our baptismal promises using the words of the Apostles' Creed, which may be found on page 10 of the Missalat. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead, he ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Together as one voice, we turn to our merciful, ever-present God, with our prayers and our petitions toward his merciful love. For members of the church, for you and I, as we go about our everyday activities, may the Holy Spirit draw us ever more deeply into the communion for which we are made and that belonging to the body of Christ, we pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders and national leaders, for ways we're leaders in our own families by reaching out to the ostracized and the outcasts and also in our relationships, may God give us the fortitude to working to promote peace and promoting unity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are grieving broken relationships or the loss of a loved one, we pray for our Paris sick list, all those in need of our prayers. We pray that God's presence may offer comfort and healing in all the ways in which we feel like we're lepers and needing God's grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our faith community and also um, throughout our diocese that are focusing on a, on a mission to serve our Lord, may God grant them strength and wisdom in their discernment. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, today we remember in a special way Jeannie Wolfile and also Elizabeth and John Kostick. May they and all the faithful departed, may they rejoice in the communion of heaven with the angels and saints. And may we meet again, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those prayers that we voice now in the silence of our hearts. We make these prayers through the intercession of St. Joseph. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, trusting in your saving power, we offer these prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all, his holy church. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself. 
that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for a consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, 
and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. In our own indirect way, let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
our prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, hard to believe, but Lent begins on Wednesday with Ash Wednesday. And our Ash Wednesday Masses are at 8.30 in the morning, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and 7 p.m. In prior years, we've had a fish fry. This year, we can't do that. So um, please come to one of the Masses. At 4 o'clock Mass, there's always a feeder into that fish fry, and we always had a great crowd for it. But love to have you come anyway. Be sure to come. And uh, you'll find that we distribute ashes a little bit differently. We'll still bring them to you in the pews, but we'll sprinkle just a small smidge of ash on your forehead. And that's to avoid physically touching every person in the church. And that's also how it's being done worldwide. You'll see at our doors, we have these Lenten meditation books. I really challenge you to make this Lent the best possible. If you're going to be quarantined or we're in the middle of a pandemic, why not grow your faith life all the more? But I have these books at all the doors. There's a free will offering. If you're able to um, contribute, I'd be grateful. Um, there's fewer people at Mass right now because of the pandemic. Bring one to a friend who needs one. Um, this is a way of reaching out to a leper in reality. If you're viewing this online and you'd like us to send you one, I'd be happy to do that. I was at the post office today and I mailed three packages out for three different addresses with a couple of these books in there where people have requested them. But it's a way we all can grow together. But use this pandemic in that way. Don't forget our uh, meat raffle, which I do thank Anne so much for speaking about. She just did a wonderful job. But you'll see this, um, this freezer here. It's looking for a good home. And as I look out here, I tell you that freezer would look nice in your house. Um, it's a prize that was picked up yesterday that the retailer said flies off the shelves as soon as they get them. And we went to a location to get one yesterday, and um, other locations locally didn't have them. So we're grateful to be able to pick that up. I do want to thank the Klemetschko family Piazza Funeral Home, which is right next door to St. Josephat's. They sponsored that freezer, which I'm grateful, as well as a couple hundred dollars of gift cards that goes inside of it. So I'm grateful for that support. But everybody, I'd love everyone to join this meat raffle. Your odds are good. That ticket that's $50, which is a lot of money, goes into 48 different ways of winning. I think it's 46 are those rounds that we do on a normal meat raffle. Um, one is the 50-50 split, and another one is that freezer. That freezer and, um, you know, the $200, it's a, it's a nice win for that ticket. And you've got 47 other chances if you don't win that freezer. So by all means, get involved. And it's a great fundraiser for our parish. I do thank the committee that is probably watching this and is involved in, um, in, uh, in helping us promote this meat raffle. When Ash Wednesday starts, we also start Stations of the Cross. A really nice way of entering into the season is every Friday night, make a commitment to it, that every Friday night at 7 o'clock, I'll come here for 20 minutes and I will pray the Stations of the Cross. Um, pray them with me. Last but not least, this Monday begins the Consecration to St. Joseph, which is a diocesan initiative, and our parish is participating in it as well. Every day, beginning Monday at 12 noon, on our Facebook channel, as well as our YouTube channel, I'll be praying the 33 days that lead to that consecration. So you're welcome to join me in prayer at 12 noon on Facebook and also on YouTube. If you um, don't want to do it at that time because you um, are working during the day, you can play it at 1 o'clock in the afternoon or play it at 7 p.m. At, you know, at the end of the day. But you can choose a time to do this devotion to St. Joseph that begins this Monday. I challenge you all to do that. If you'd like to download all the information, it's available on the Buffalo Diocese website. Um, but I will be praying it every day at 12 noon 
broadcast rate on those two channels. And I encourage you to join me in prayer as we dedicate our parish and consecrate ourselves to the patronal saint, St. Joseph, the patron saint of the Universal Church. I think he's just so important in Buffalo with our cathedral's name, St. Joseph. So there's plenty of things to do. Take a book home with you. Come on Ash Wednesday. I'll see you at Stations of the Cross, okay? During the course of the week, you can work on this in the, in the consecration to St. Joseph, and we'll keep you busy, okay? So please know my continued prayers for you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh.